Greetings, pool fans. We are coming to you live from Griff's Billiards here in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is day three of the WPA Players Championship. We are down to the final 16. It's single elimination, so the winner moves on to the quarters. The loser is out. Race to seven, alternate break. Now, let's meet the players for this round of 16 match. Firstly, he comes to you from Taiwan. Please welcome Kevin Chang. And his opponent from the USA, Sean Wilkie. And now, gentlemen, it's time for the lag. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to day three of action here at the WPA Players Championship, stage two, final round. We are down to our final 16 players, as we just heard Ted Lerner address. I am joined in the booth by Jason Kane. Jason, how are you today, buddy? Okay, buddy. It's going to be an excellent match. We got Sean, get some, Wilkie versus Yushun, Kevin Chang. This should be a really good match. Folks, you can see on the screen the format we're playing by here. These are all single elimination nine ball matches, races to seven. Each match is win by two. If we end up tied at nine nine, there will be a lag in a one rack decider to determine who moves on to the final round of eight. We are playing on nine foot diamond tables wrapped in beautiful green Andy 988 cloth. And we are playing with the new Cyclop Hyperion pool ball set. There is a three-point rule in effect for the break. Three balls must be pocketed and or cross the head string. And we are also playing a three foul rule. If a player should foul three consecutive times in one game, they will lose that game. Mr. Sean Wilkie, Mr. Gitsum, getting ready to take apart rack number one. We are getting underway here. Day three, folks. Parks the cue ball nicely. It gets kicked once or twice. Nothing falls. Sean is a 743 on the Fargo, and Yushin Chang is a 798. So about a 55 point difference between the two gentlemen. Yep. Yushin Chang uh, goes by Kevin Chang, like a nickname when he plays in the USA. So we may be saying Kevin Chang sometimes. He said it's okay. Might be a little easier on us. <laughs> yeah. Although Yushan's not too hard. No, Yushan's Cheng Yushan or Yushan Chang. And talking about that, he's a 2015 US Open champion. Yeah, he's a beast. He's he's a monster overseas. He's a monster everywhere, but he's certainly very well known a little closer toward his side of the world. Attempted a safety, but left a, a clear sh long shot on the one ball for Sean. How do you like this for an opening shot? Yeah, I mean, you can duck as well here. You can send the one in line with the head spot up and down the table, cue ball run rail towards a nine and behind a seven kind of, but you probably take this on, yeah? Um, a follow forward for the two ball in the same pocket off two rails. Yeah, that would be ideal. Like I was just saying, though, it's first shot, so it's, he might, oh, he's like maybe looking at back cutting it. Not sure what that was. Um, I think there's an angle coming off, maybe he's looking at there. First shot out the gate, it's, you make this and you've set an early statement and you've uh, elevated your confidence quite a bit. That was a difficult pot. Jacked up, made it pot even harder. Now we'll get a look at Kevin Cheng's aggressive side. We started this event with 64 players on day one. Got down to 32 on day two. We are here day three with our final 16 players. And at the end of today, we will be down to the final four. So nice shot he played there. Should be some amazing matches for the rest of this event. A 
holds the cue ball up pretty nicely to maintain a nice angle for the four. I think we'll see the five deposited into our left side pocket here momentarily. Most likely going up and down over the head spot. One rail. We'll see. I think he wants to bring it right down by the seven. Ooh. Mm. Tie that up, I think. Yeah, it made the seven and the nine a little trickier. We can see right there the six doesn't pass the eight to the upper left. So there's going to be some manufacturing of an angle or a shot or two here. <coughs> I don't think he meant to uh, hit those balls. Uh, when I saw him lining up, he was looking to go up and down the head spot. I think he hit the ball too thick. But we will never know. Unless I ask him later, that is. We'll ask him if he wins the match. Yeah. If he loses, he'll be back at the pool where Mika Imminent is sitting <laughs> alone, still talking to himself after that loss yesterday. Yeah, that was a brutal match for Mika. I believe Chang was trying to actually nudge that cute, the six ball with the cue ball. And Do you think he's going safe behind the 7 9 with the cue ball, sending the six to the Andy Cloth up top rail, maybe? Cross, so crossing it over there? Yeah, yeah just like a, a two rail behind a 9 7. It's a good shot. If nothing else, he's ensured to leave distance. I think he did. He played it. Let's see. He doesn't want the six there. No, he's. He's not going to be happy with no, that. Misjudged that one. Again, though, the seven. Not an easy situation. Mm -hmm. 7-9 combination, I suppose, is on offer if he can get the cue ball down to the foot rail. Still no bargain, but he will be on the proper side of it at that point. Could just make this, send the cue ball down towards a head spot, not that far, and play a position for safety where you bank the seven up the table, cue ball behind the nine. I mean, there's so many options. He might try and go into them somehow. We will find out. I have a little piece of information that I was going to withhold for a few minutes till the latter part of the match. But after doing a little thinking, I think it's information I should release now so you can tell your friends and your family, anybody that may not already have this stream package purchased. Our next match, we've got Eklund Kachi versus Shane Van Boning. It doesn't get any better than that. Shaking his head here, Sean. Looking to bank this ball, I think, and seeing what a seven goes afterwards. Like a two-way. Yeah, he is. He is looking at the bank ball. Bank, and maybe the seven hits a side rail, top rail, stays up there. Cue ball down here. You can just play it like a stop shot then maybe. Kind of leave, I don't know. I don't think I'd be looking at the bank, but maybe maybe the... Uh, He's a, I don't know. We'll, we'll, yeah. I'm, let's I'm just, just going to watch it. Yeah, let's stop trying to figure yeah. it out. Let's see what he does. We're going to make ourselves look foolish. Yeah, it's hard to tell from up here as well what angle he has and this and that. See, from where he's pointing there, it looks like he's playing the nine straight in. No comfort. He was. And he, boy, did he rush that. Yeah, he took a long time to think about it and just went boom. He decided what he wanted to do and just one stroke at it. It was a very difficult shot nonetheless. Well, a couple of mistakes from both players this game. This would be a big one to win. This is the very first rack of the day, folks. Today is Thursday. Switching hands. April 18th, 2019. And I say that for a reference point in case someone catches this match on YouTube 10 years down the road, they know when we were playing. Yushin Cheng, Kevin Cheng takes the first game against serve. He's up one nothing. 
now might be a good opportunity to thank a few of our sponsors. I won't run through all of them, but first off, our host location right here in Las Vegas, Griff's Billiards. Diamond Billiard Products, you can see that beautiful four and a half by nine foot diamond table we're playing on, as well as all tables in this event. Wrapped in that green Andy 988 billiard cloth. Master Chalk is the official sponsor of this event. And it is being produced by CSI, Q Sports International. More sponsors as well. We will touch on them a little bit later in the match. For now, Rack 2, Cheng to break. Cubal. Uh oh. That's the white ball. Went straight untouched on the side. He stopped it, but then it just kept checking over there. Yep. Big chance for Sean to get back in the match. Ball in hand, wide open table. I don't see any difficulties here, Ben. It's looking pretty good for Mr. Wilkie. And the speed he's attacking, he doesn't, he doesn't see any difficulties either. Yeah, he's got a nice, quick pace of play. I think with Sean, I, I think, and a lot of people are are guilty. Um, his his pace around the table is his best friend, but could also be his worst enemy at times. His pace is what allows him to keep such a good rhythm and just you know keep running running balls and doing what he needs to do. But at times, that can backfire and bite you in the butt um, by shooting a shot just a little bit too quickly. I'm not going to say that's what happened on his combination attempt on the nine. But we do see that with some of these upper, well, all these players that tend to play really, really fast. Occasionally, it seems like they get just a little bit, little bit quicker than intended, and it tends to be their mistake. But as we see right now, that's not the case for Mr. Wilkie. Got a nice angle here on a six to get over for the eight. It's a key shot here, obviously. I was thinking about that earlier. This is a one key shot. Did he hit it hard enough? Would like to have been another six or 10 inches over. Fire this in lower left with a touch of, touch of inside, I believe. Do you just play, do you think, for one rail over or backwards and forwards? My, I go back and forth. I like letting it go a little bit. So do I, I like to hit it a little harder. I don't, I don't like to get, especially if I'm gonna put a touch of inside on it, I don't want that cue ball to change direction prior to hitting the eight ball. Hit it soft. That cue ball has a little more opportunity to grab. Just like that. You see, and a lot of amateurs don't do that. Yeah. Uh, I see in league, they, they just try and lag it in or spit, and they end up missing it, or yeah. like you were saying, yeah. spinning the ball before it hits the ball. So Wilkie wasting no time. Punishing Cheng for his scratch on the break. That was one of the quicker racks we've seen in this event so far. So Sean not phased by rack number one. Returns fire and steals the serve back. And Sean, he's played for many years, won a bunch of action pool tour events. And one of his best finishes was 2008 in the Super Billiards Expo Players Championship. He came in second uh, to Shane Van Boning. I was, I, I was there for that. No shame in that. Yeah. As a top field as well. Sean's a phenomenal bar table player as well. Both of these players I noticed are putting the two ball at the back which they don't have to, but they just happen to be doing that. Yeah, probably force of habit. A lot of tournaments nowadays require the nine ball to be, or excuse me, the two ball to be racked at the back. We are not requiring that for this event, but we have seen it quite often. Could be random, could be force of habit. Made a ball. Sean crushes the rack. Cue ball, loose, but he can see the one, tough shot. Trying to, he made one ball, and I know the one ball passed the head string. The eight went flying in and out. Okay, thank yeah, you. I saw, yeah, I saw I that. Trying to figure out where the third point was achieved. But as hard as he hit it, it had to have been legal. But just Sean's looking good right now. 
It's, it's a tough shot though, this one. Looks very confident. Trying to spin it back, go one, two, three rails, and get, in a two, get on the two towards a nine ball pocket there. But it's a thin cut. Made it. Uh, well, that wasn't what he was playing, I think, but he got there. He, I saw him pointing at all the different rails, but. As Carl would call that a nice, useful nudge. Useful nudge on the six ball there. Got him into pretty good position for this deuce right now. Did he hit it hard enough? He got there. Got there, but four ball is going to be a little, a little bit tricky. I think. You might be able to just draw this back out, kind of kill it off the rail, and draw it right back above the four. A little bit tough to tell. I think he might run into it. Ops to go below it. Not a bad decision. <coughs> a bit of a steep cut up table. I favor Sean to make this ball. Shout out to Jake Lawson if you're watching. My guess is that you are. Sean slowed down on the shot. Took his time a little bit more. He overcut the ball. However, he has taken second place. Second best prize for that shot. He ended up hooking Chang. Chang looking at the one rail escape here. Nothing easy on offer. The hit isn't extremely difficult, however, Pocketing and or playing safe from here is a unpredictable story. See Kevin using the diamonds there to measure up to help aid in his alignment. Wow. Watch well, curling in. And it's rolling in. My gosh. Oh. <laughs> Looked like it drifted back over a little bit, didn't it? Ooh. Wow. Well, that could be a useful piece of information for the players right there. Kind of understanding. Looked like that, that pocket might have pulled just a fraction. It's not the angle he wanted here. Seven doesn't go by the eight. He's going to come back, pull it back. Seven on the side he's looking at. If he goes too far, he can play it in the corner. But after the mistakes both players have made, this is a bit of a tester. Depending on how he, how he digs into this ball, he could, he could play the six to the upper left, draw the cue ball back, get some action on the nine, and still get that same position on the seven he was looking at. It's risky and probably not necessary, but possible. I like those exhibition style shots. Now is probably not the time for an exhibition shot. Okay. A little short. Flick of the hand tells us that he's not too thrilled with this position. Two rails behind the eight for position. I think he attacks here. Yeah. I think he attacks, Jason. No, no, I'm making a ball inside about two rails behind. Oh, I see. And out, yeah. I thought you were saying a two no, rail safe. No, no, no. Or oh, he could be banking it. He heard you. Tough shot. He's on the 50 yard line. It's a steep cut to that side pocket. And it's a huge pocket for the bank. Bank obviously a little bit more risky. Or at least that's what he's trying to weigh out in his head right now. Drains it. Nice shot. It's 
these players are feeling it, folks. And we are getting treated to some great pool. Sean Boki holding serve. Leading Kevin Chang by a score of two to one. Kevin Chang beat Fu Che Wei 7-4 in the first round, and then David Anderson 7-2. Sean beat Billy Thorpe in the first round, 7-5. Yeah, we saw that, day one. Then he beat a Japanese player who I like to call Dodong Zircon. He's uh, <laughs> Dodong Diamond's look-alike. The doppelganger that we've been seeing. James Aranis has a twin running around the building in this same event, folks. There's John Lehman coming in the booth. Best tournament director in the business. Kind of stopped the cue ball, made a ball, and perfect on the one. Seven, eight, opened up. Looks good here. Don't see too many problems, Jason. Two to the three, maybe. Looks good here, I think. I mean, four to, once he gets on the four with a correct angle on five, it's all over. Yeah, that was a, a very rewarding break shot. Hmm. I expected more than that on that ball. I wonder if maybe he's looking at spinning this ball around and playing it back up table or in the side. That wouldn't make sense, would it? He got out of line like you said there. And he got out of line again. Definitely didn't get enough spin on that. Well, we were saying if he got on the four, it would be easy. And he got on it, but not what he wanted. spot here. I think he's looking at tracking the cue ball back into the seven and possibly just kind of killing the cue ball there. Taking the steep cut on the five. Could get an unlucky hook here if it hits a seven and then just falls behind the eight. He hasn't even looked at playing a save. So he must not be too disappointed in it. Oh, man. Can't do that. That's a big mistake on a fairly Easy out for a player of his level. That's on Chang's break, too. So if Wilkie can put these five balls away, advantage Sean. Decent shot there. He got above it like he needed to. I'm not going to try to predict what he does for position on the seven. There's a few different options. So we will let the pool do the talking on this one. Punch a jump up, kind of, but that's his style. Chin off the cue, but he gets it done. And he gets it done with pace rather quickly. Sean's stealing games now. Stole that one away from Chang. Sean leading three to one and breaking in rack number five. We saw a player similar speed and kind of style 
but not with the same results in the qualifiers. Ian Costello was a fast player, just mm -hmm. going around, punching him in. Yeah, Ian's an excellent local player, lives here in Las Vegas, Ian Costello. Fortunately, he didn't qualify for this event. He did try. It was an extremely tough draw for everybody involved in the event. So many top players didn't qualify, like Tyler Steyer, Bill Moss Foles. Absolutely amazing, the quality of, quality of player we saw just in the qualifier events, and heartbreaking to see so many top names not qualify. It was pretty unbelievable. Yeah, Tyler didn't make it, Vilmos didn't make it, um, Ruslan didn't make it. It was a handful. Made a ball in the corner. Where's that seven going? He's on the one. Are they saying if it's legal or not? I think it's legal. Yeah, no, it I is. Think, yeah, yeah, I believe the two ball came up and back down again. He pocketed the ball and the one is up table, so we do have all three points successfully executed. Not sure if that seven goes by the nine. Could be also a seven nine combo later once a one ball disappears here. The uh, biggest problem might be getting on the two now. No, don't do that. He's not looking to no. come off the rail and just nudge into that. That's silly. I'd come over by the other rail by the five here and just go wide. Make sure I have a shot on that too. Yeah, I like that decision. Uh, Ooh. This is dangerous, you see. It's dangerous, but it's rewarding. He got away with it, but I don't, I don't know. He hit it well. It yes, was he did. extremely risky, but he turned out golden. So yeah, now it is tough to tell um, with that seven nine situation. If the seven passes, I believe the right shot is to play the seven oh, to yeah. the side. Yeah. If it doesn't pass, I, he could run out to the seven and play the seven nine combo. He could opt to play a four seven nine combo right now after the two ball. We'll find out. I think that might be what he was looking at there or off the four playing them yeah. both. I mean off the yeah. seven. Play the four in the side off the seven and send the nine up table. That's really good shot. A little bit surprised they haven't asked the ref to watch this. That's a pretty close shot. No question, no good hit. So I think he's gonna play your shot here, the four off the seven, playing the four into the left side pocket. No, I don't think so now. No? I don't know. Too much angle? Well, I don't know. I, we can't tell what happens with a seven later. I would just shoot a four in a corner. It depends on a seven and nine. I just can't tell. You know, it's hard to guess. Mm -hmm. If he has to move the seven nine and it doesn't go later, then I suppose you've got to do something now. He's like looking he's looking. Yeah, he wouldn't be looking at this unless he had to. He's still looking at it, yeah. There's no reason to move it if it was an easy combo later. So here we go. Off the seven. Two for. It's a twofer. Wow, I don't know. That's amazing. It's a twofer. Good <laughs> shot there by Mr. Sean Wilkie. <coughs> well, he got it done. Sean looking good so far, leading four to one over Kevin Cheng. Takes down rack number five. I'm going to use this opportunity to thank a couple more of our sponsors. How Tips, H-O-W Tips. Check them out on Facebook. Big thank you to the Rio Hotel and Casino. We've got a few more events coming up there in a couple of months a USAPL and BCA Pool League World and National Championships. Some others as well. Park that cue ball, made of two balls. Wow, I tell you what, if it wasn't for the unforced errors, he's playing position on that one. His, his break control has been fantastic. I mean, look at this. How's he down 4-1? He's got to break down because he's playing position for the one every time. Can't miss, uh, can't miss your opportunities like we saw with that four ball a couple racks prior. Cost him that game. Sean was able to win the next one as well.
fairly confident in saying Cheng has to win this match to keep himself in it. A 5-1 deficit is extremely difficult to overcome, especially when your opponent is playing as well as Sean Wilkie is. That's a good shot. That was a, a key shot there, four to the five. Let me pull it out. One rail, six ball, same pocket. Yes, he will. I'm gonna pull it back for the eight ball in the same pocket. He might now. be playing all four in the same pocket. Yeah, it might. Did he just switch hands? He did. He's gonna shoot two shots, opposite handed, back to back. That's strong. It's like Ronnie O'Sullivan in snooker. O'Sullivan, number one snooker player in the world, maybe the best player ever. When he gets bored in the middle of a match, he'll just start playing left-handed and run, run out like that. That guy is a something else. Something special, that man. Yushin Chang putting the extension on. And, and still coming up short. He's <laughs> extension opposite-handed. I'll get a bridge out here. I'm gonna play one pocket with these last four balls. Composing himself. Chang with the break and run. Gets back within two. Sean still, still kind of in command here, leading four to two. Predator Qs are the official Q of Q Sports International. We do support them for their for their support. For their, <laughs> we support them for their support. We do appreciate them and thank them for their support. And of course, the WPA World Pool Billiard Association. This is their first event, and hopefully. The first of many more. I'm hoping for many more. I know I've sure had a good time these last seven days. Sean, 4 2 up. He can break and run here. Get a commanding lead. Made a ball. Where's that two ball going? Well, exactly where he didn't want it to go. He's going to have to play a push out. Me? Well, no, it's not easy actually, this push out. I think if it was me, I'd jump it. <laughs> <laughs> Completely kidding. Wherever you push out is such a sellout safety. I, I'm thinking, you push out an inch or two there, just get so easy to safe behind where the nine is. Push down table. Well, you can see it's same shot, sell out safety. Push up table, way up to the top left. Uh, it, again, <laughs> and this is not easy. I'm interested what he does myself. Might push to hook himself. It's tough to even. Or maybe just to see the edge of the left. Yeah, see the edge, edge, edge. Yeah, I don't think, he needed to not let him see the right hand side of the one, because it's too easy to play safe. He could, I don't he know. He might have got there. Yeah, he might have. That was a good push out then if he did that. No, he left it on the other edge. Yeah, I believe he's left a full ball. He can elevate with this with some right hand spin and probably use the six, seven, or the nine for some sort of coverage. Got to hit the one pretty hard to achieve that. Doesn't want to. Doesn't want to risk leaving the one exposed. So this is pretty much all cue ball here. His, his main focus is that cue ball. I was going to say you don't want to make the one. I, I was going to say it and I held it in. The thought didn't even <laughs> cross my mind. Because that happens sometimes. It's heading, you know, hard towards a pocket. So Cheng played an amazing safety on himself. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, that was a big shot to mess up. 
I mean, he didn't really mess it up too much, but a bit unfortunate. Made a good hit. I thought he's gonna get no oh, boy. Things are not rolling Tang's way. And that's certainly not good when your opponent's playing great. You know what, Ben? If he doesn't make the one there and he locks him up, 4-2, 4-3, he's breaking with that amazing break. That could have been 4-4. Four, four. You know, mm -hmm. what a turnaround by that one falling in. Yeah, that could have been a momentum swing in his direction. Instead, it benefits the Wilkie camp. That's John Lehman's laugh. For those of you listening. Chris Melling over here having a proper pint. <laughs> I'm not joking. He actually ordered for breakfast buffalo wings. And he goes, do they come with chips? And she goes, no. OK, and order chips as well, please. That's, that's what he ordered <laughs> this morning when he walked in. Buffalo wings Good old and Chris a portion Melling. of chips. <laughs> and he ordered, he said, and, and a Coke. And she had said, Diet Coke. He said, No, Coke. You know, like she, <laughs> <laughs> like she was implying, yeah, yeah. Come on, pal. Cut the calories out. <laughs> so this is a key shot here. Draw it back. Not too far. Don't want to get hooked and you don't want to go on the side. Just want to scoot down there. Put a six in a corner. Oh, he played it. Hmm. That's not what I was thinking. You know, I thought he was going to pull it down. I thought so too, but the way, he, the way he hit it, I think he was trying to stun back to the left side of the table to play the six to the lower right. Yeah. You know, we're not sure the angle he had there, but actually he should have had the correct angle if he did that. I don't know. Yeah, he's shaking his head. He didn't, he didn't get into that ball. Safe. Playing safe. I just, he's got to avoid the nine ball here. Wow, very simple safe. Yep. Simple and effective. Cheng can't see any of this ball. He'd be happy to get back to the table, though, from earlier's position. He thought Sean would be out. Going to see a kick or a jump shot here. Oh, this is a good chance to kick safe here, Ben, because he could kick and the cue ball behind the nine. Could even see a little action, some movement on that nine ball if he hits this a little on one side or the other of that six. He doesn't like it, and I'm telling you folks, I've got a great angle. I'm looking straight into the shot from our booth right here, and it's it's tricky. It's almost like he has to swerve around that seven and still kick it. It's a, it's a tight squeeze between the seven and the nine. Oh, he hit it too full. Or will he get away with it? I think he has. Yes, he has. Sean's shaking his head. He knows. He knows Kevin got a little lucky there. Hit the ball too full. But he made a good hit. He's still shaking his head, talking to himself a little bit over there. He needs to uh, not let that stay under his skin for too long. I mean, this was really caused by Sean's uh, five to the six positional mistake. So he sh should forget about this little bit of fortune and fire this in or fire a safe, stop safe. Obviously, the hit here is easy. He's taking the time to see where, work out where the six is going to go. Oh, I think he was going for that. Here's a chance. You should Chang get back in the match.
Just looking at the angle of the cue ball will come off the rail here. Just float this in. Just all you have to think about here is making the ball. I wonder if he's looking at the nine as well, um, where the cue ball is going to track off the seven ball. He's going to want to make sure he stays on the right side of the seven if he can. The correct side, I should say. Uh-oh. Needs it to slow down. And that's what I meant by the correct side. So he's shooting, and the cue ball is going to be tracking away from the nine ball, taking it completely out of the question. Making position on that eight, a breeze. Wow, we've got a match on our hands again. Yeah, we saw a fortunate, fortunate safety there from Cheng. And was rewarded. He's now trailing only by one rack. Sean Wilkie leading four to three. Cheng will be breaking in rack number eight. Let's see if he makes a ball again and gets that position on the one if he parks a cue ball. Mm -hmm. Folks, May 24th through June 1st right here at Vegas. We've got three at Griff's here in Las Vegas. We've got three different U.S. Open championships. The U.S. Open Bank Pool, the U.S. Open Straight Pool, and the U.S. Open One Pocket Championships. There's an all-around bonus for that, those events as well. If you enter all three events and you win the all-around, you win a $3,500 bonus and a spot into the Predator World 10 Ball Championships. That is a $100,000 added event. Second place runner up in those one pocket or those US Open events will achieve a $1,500 bonus. It's May 24th through June 1st right here at Griffs. For more information, check out playcsipool.com slash events. Oh, he lost a cue ball this time. Made a ball. The one went towards where it was always going. But has a chance. Window to get on the two balls a little tough. Might be able to make this in the top right-hand corner. Float forward, miss the four, and land on the left-hand side rail for the two up where he's standing there. Ideally, that's where he'd like to be out. I wonder if he can just kill it with low. Yeah, he looked like he was going to kill it. I, I saw the float, but if he can kill it, I'd like to hit it hard and do that as well. I say he's going to hit it with follow. Mr. Four hit top rail once he starts looking at this. There. That angle. Don't do it, Kevin. That's it. Oh, no! Kevin, don't do it. He stumped us. Don't do it. You're killing me. I think me. he hit it really good, too. <laughs> wow. Well, that's why we're sitting in this booth. Oh, that was a great shot. I never even saw him look, you know, like pointing down here and there. You know, I think he just decided the last second to do it when he was up there. I think he's like, I'm going to mess with the commentators. Yeah. <laughs> I had a feeling he was starting to change his mind. That's why I say, don't do it. <laughs> I knew something was up. Wow, this is a tough shot here. Kevin's played a lock-up safety behind the nine twice. Once he accidentally made the one ball, so he locked, him safe, locked himself up. But now he's executed this one perfectly. Wow, this is so tough to hit. This is three rails minimum. And even once you hit it, after the speed dies down, you're probably going to leave it. Just to hit this ball would be one heck of an achievement. I might want to think about tying the two up behind the three a bit better and giving ball in head. I don't know. It's so hard to hit this ball. Wow. Oh, excellent hit. 
Wow. wow. And he got Great a good, hit. Look, even Kevin's tapping the table there. Excellent hit. And he left it and he, safe. And he didn't leave anything too aggressive. Wow. He must, might be must hit. He might be faced with another safety, but wow, that was fantastic escape. Sean did really well. Now he's got Cheng thinking. Cheng can't even figure out what to do with this shot yet. You gonna hide behind the two and the three here? I think I'm taking the cue ball. Two, three rails underneath them. Gotta hit back. Like that. So Cheng's cue ball control has been Outstanding this match, both on the break and on the safety play. Again, Sean facing a tough kick shot. Whatever method he uses, I think I want to learn. Another excellent kick shot, and look at this. Wow. Look at this. Incredible, again with the tap. Cheng acknowledging two shots in a row. The amazing escapes from Sean Wilkie. He also opened up the two ball more with that shot. Going for the jump cue. Sean must be one of those players that doesn't mind playing the first match of the day. I know I'd like to have my first match about 9 p.m. I'm the same. Midnight for me. Sean comes from a three-hour time difference, too, and he's only been here for a, two days, three days now. So it's maybe even a little bit earlier to him. Although I think Cheng's time difference is about 12 or 15 hours, so I can only imagine the jet lag he experienced. hit. Is he going to get lucky? He did. I, oh, no. He's popped out for the combo. Mm. Oh, there's a good look at it. This play looks like you're making the one. So it's just the same line. Big miss. Might have left a jump shot again. Or kick. I think he left the combo straight on. Maybe not. Kevin shrugged a little bit, but I thought he could see enough of the one to hawk at the two. Might see a little swerve action here. And we're going to spin around the edge of that six just a little bit. Wow. Oh. He doesn't mind that. Well, well, I don't know. It could have been worse. <laughs> could have been better, certainly, but. It's just going down. Oh, I was going to say, it's just going down. Hitting. Now, if the eight ball and the three ball were in different positions, he'd be liking it a whole lot less. He was just looking to go forward in the, out in the open in the corner over there, make sure we can see the four and have a long shot at it. He's walking over there again. That's where he wants to be. Probably wants to follow so we can cue out of the pocket. Oh, he could hear more angle than I thought. This is a shot.
big shot right here. Cue ball. No, he's okay. I'm gonna play the five on the side. I don't know if that was the intended plan. I doubt it. I think he's going for the corner. I think he was just happy to pocket that four and take whatever the table gave him. That was a difficult pocket. Nice nudge. Yeah, that didn't hurt his campaign at all there. So we could be all tied up here and momentarily. Seen a couple of swings so far. As we said earlier, this is a win by two format. Tied at nine apiece, there will be a one rack decider determined by a lag shot. Going for his extension again. Checked up. Not ideal. It's going to take a really nice pure stroke to pocket this ball and get back down for position on that nine. Such a tough shot in the circumstances. Made it look easy. Now we're all tied up at four apiece. Four racks apiece. Sean Wilson might be feeling a little heat now. Things were, roll things were rolling really well. Everything was going his way. He's playing great. One little roll, one little twist here and there. Now we're tied up at four. Yeah, he was 4-2 up. Kevin Chang started to lay down some tough safeties. And in the last game, Sean finally got a chance. 1-2, fairly easy combo, you have to say. And he overcut it and hung it. Never got back to the table. so far nothing down I can say for certain that was a legal break this time yep no question about it that was legal I think we got about seven or eight of them past the head string on that shot <laughs> tough opening shot because the two ball is back where he's standing and the angle is taking him down table Might be playing safe or cutting this in a side and going one, two. Yeah, I don't know. One, two. Yeah, he's looking at cutting it in a side, going one, two, spinning out, but then he's only gonna have to two, four or something. I wonder if he can cut that one ball in and take the cue ball to the foot rail back up between the three and the seven. Tall order, tough angle. 
Also brings the side pocket into play. I don't like this shot. He may be drawing out of safety again on us, tricking us. He did cover on the side. One, two, skim the A9 as well, a bit fortunate. And he does have that two, four, four safety option here. Sean appears to be another one of those players who's adapted to playing full time with the extension. Look at this shot. Oh, he fooled me. I thought he was going to shoot with his full length cue and just pop it over there. It's impossible. I think he was looking at maybe mass saying that. Yeah. He's staying with his shooting cue. Or is he? No, he's switching cues. I don't think he's got, you know, when you kick off the top rail, skim the two and head down table, I think the cue might get stuck up table with a six. Six ball gets in the way, I think yeah. you're right. That's why he's not thinking about that option. He's switching to another long cue, though, if you notice. And he isn't. He's taking the other part off. Jump break cue. Taking off the break part. So you think he's jumping, not messing? He could, the ball could fly off the table here. Yes, I believe he's jumping this ball. Yeah, he took the third piece off of that cue. I think it's either a full length jump cue or a jump break cue. But he disassembled it, took it down to two pieces. Tough to control this. It's easy to lose a ball off the table. Ideally, he'd like to get up and over that nine and land as quickly as possible on the other side of the nine giving that cue ball a chance to stop its bouncing before it hits the two. He made a good hit. He did pretty well. However, he might have left us. Kevin is not looking happy. You can see the edge. You might not be able to see enough to make it, especially jacked up here. Let's see. No. He does yeah. not like it. I love that we're able to see their emotions and their expressions. that <laughs> he didn't like it meanwhile he hit it perfect Kevin looking good here in rack nine Kill this ball with a little bit of left hand spin. Leaves himself a good angle just to naturally travel back, back and forth to the six in the upper right. Seven to the eight is going to be the key shot. It's 
walking around, making sure he can visualize somewhere to land with a cue ball where he wants to be. Just in the middle of the table and wants to go two rails for the eight afterwards. Perfect where he wanted it. Oh, he might. You go forward here or you do throw him back one rail? Like that way. What do you think? We're going to find out. I, I think he plays this with low. Yeah, with low, yeah. We've seen him with low left and comes up, draws out of it. Um, a lot of Some players who are very confident playing with inside spin will come forward and spin this ball not around three rails. That's the way I was thinking originally, this way. Um, I kind of figured he was going to go this way. Uh, two, two times so far this match, I've seen him uh, play a ball with inside, and he did not get the response off the, off the cue ball that he had expected. And that particular shot right there required a lot of inside to pull off. So I think he opted to go with what he was a little more comfortable with today, anyhow. Well, he takes a 5-4 lead, and he's got this clever little break going. This could be bad news for Sean. Yes, he's, he's shown so far that he's very, very good at parking the cue ball on the break, so long as it doesn't get kicked by an object ball. Again, we see the two ball being racked at the back. That is not mandatory. The rack they are using is mandatory. There's no, no template racks for this event. Also forgot to mention the nine ball counts in any pocket as a win on the break. We've seen a couple of golden breaks this week. Two or three of them on this feature table. Kevin's been playing some excellent safeties. Even these little, you know, just nothing kind of safeties. Just making sure it gets hooked. And they're working. His cue ball control has been really, really good. Yeah, we thought, I mean, 4-2 down. And Sean's getting a little flustered here, and rightfully so. Things are kind of, momentum has swung a little bit. He needs to, Sean needs to just hold himself together mentally just take what the table gives him. He can't control anything else besides himself. Keep an eye on that purple four ball. Lost the cube a little bit, went forward this time. Made a couple of balls. A one always going to the same spot, but he's hooked. See, if he, if he parked the cube ball like normal, he's out. He just went forward on it. Yep, lost it a little bit there. And could be could be issues for him right out of, right out the gate here. Shot number one. Maybe play a push out. I mean you're still gonna leave a bank or something. Jason, we're surrounded by Team Europe over here. He's pushing out to No, he's leaving this shot? Well, Sean's gonna take this. That's a tough shot, but you can't give it back. Four goes afterwards. Game winning shot if you make it. I, I do that push out all the time, but I'm playing against uh, some league players, shall we say. <laughs> some recreational players. Yeah, I don't do, I wouldn't push out so against a, a guy of uh, Sean's caliber. You're that guy that goes into those little bars and takes all the drinks and money from those innocent people. I used to be until Fargo came along. Now I've gone to a bar, oh, what's your Fargo? I'm like, oh my God, you're killing me. I go with a convention badge, all disguises, but not anymore, it doesn't work. I need the Texaco gas station suit. Looks like he just got off of pumping gas. Need you a fake name tag. Maybe go by your middle name. <laughs> I've done all that. This is game four. Beautiful shot. Wow. Excellent, excellent shot under pressure. Couldn't afford to miss that and go 6-4 down. Hey, this ain't easy either. We've seen this a few times this week. They make an excellent shot players and then miss the next one. But he's composing himself, Sean, here. 
taking extra time on this shot. I like that he's doing that, kind of slowed down a little bit. Keeping a good pace, but not rushing himself. Oh, this is a perfect viewing angle. Ooh. Oh. Big pocket with that five there. I watched him. He did stay down and everything, and you know he kept it together. It's just he misaimed, but it worked out. It did. Still got a chance. Now on a bar table, there's no doubt in my mind Sean would be cutting this ball in. Given the two feet of extra reach he's got to put on this ball, makes it more difficult. Oh yeah, he, he's definitely going for the cut. Still going for the it cut. Has okay. to, has to, has to. I just see a. a if I had to, I see a fairly easy safety putting the six by, or the five by the six, locking the eight, cue ball up behind the eight. But I, I'm a big fan of being aggressive as well. He's got a unique way with the rest, doesn't he? He lines up the shot and then slides the rest in behind it. Oh, he's, he's hung it. Oh no. Oh, this should gone. be curtains. Yushun Kevin Cheng might get to the hill here. Let's see if he can work his way through these last five balls of this game. If he loses, if you want to go up to him after and say, Sean, why don't you play safe there? I wouldn't. Okay. I would keep my distance. Let him cool down a little bit. Either one of them. There's no telling. I'm not throwing dirt on Sean's grave. Just yet. Oh, that's going to slow down. We've seen so many twists and turns this, throughout this event. Anything could happen. This is a funny angle, isn't it? Did not. He went too far. We saw Nayuki Oi in the same spot against Fedor Gorst. It ended up coming down to a 9 9 playoff. Nayuki Oi won the lag and broken ran. So it's certainly possible for Sean to overcome this. A mistake from Cheng here would not upset Sean at all. I personally don't like this shot. My, I mean, when I'm shooting it. Blind, you have to go one, 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 two, three, four, where else? That must be a sick individual, because this is one of my favorite shots. <laughs> one, two, three, doesn't need to hit the fourth, but he might. That's a good shot. Needs to go a bit further. Yeah, it, it's a good shot, I think if he Again, I'm going to say he, that's the third shot I've seen him play that required loading up with inside where he's come up a little bit short. He's in a, he's in a fine spot, but he could have he could have been another foot, foot and a half further up table just with a little more inside spin. So I don't know if it's just something he prefers to stay away from or if that's kind of the max of his stroke. Either way, it works phenomenally for him. It's all preference. Cue ball. Cue ball. Oh, I thought he might have landed on the top. He's got away with it. He hit it hard enough to make some separation at least. Cheeky little shot here. That cue ball could come back into the nine. I don't think it will. Oh, I hit that nicely. Yes, he did. This he to get be. on the hill. <laughs> Kevin Chang on the hill. Sean Wilkie trailing by a score of six to four. If you're just tuning in, or if you don't remember, our next match on our feature table, folks, you're in for a treat. We're gonna have the infamous SVB versus Ackland Kachi, 821 versus 806. World Fargo number one versus either current or former WPA number one. I don't wanna say for certain either way, but I believe Kachi's number one on the Euro Tour. Could be wrong. I know he was. 
Either way, we have two of the biggest heavy hitters in the industry coming at you next. Good break from Sean. It's a legal break. He could have done without the seven ball landing where it did. He's going to have a... Yeah, he's not liking it. He's kind of shaking his, scratching his head over there. He can see the one, but I don't believe he can pocket it to the upper left. Let's see, opts to kick, which he will not be doing at this stage. He could do a melling, double kiss us in or something like that. Careful, he might hear you. He's right next to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great, great safety. Great shot. Kevin Chang with the tap on the table, acknowledging. Pretty good safety shot there. There is a natural escape. Nine ball. There is an attempt at the nine as well. Maybe Kevin was tapping the table out of excitement. Look at this. He's looking at the combo, kick combo, and cue ball hitting towards a nine. Boy, there are a lot of good things that could happen for Chang here. Six balls possible. Hitting the one ball is routine. Now he's going to jump into the combo. He wants to play the combo and the billiard combo. That one ball could combo two balls here. This could be a crazy shot. I personally think I'm kicking it. Made the combo. Oh, oh this could my. be it. This could be good night. Sean Wilkie. Sean turns his head. Turns away from the table. Didn't even want to look. Sean made a couple of big unforced errors. One, two combo a couple of games ago. Then the count of five he hung. So he had every chance to win those games. He made some amazing kick shots as well, though, earlier. Yes, he played amazing. Both players have played outstanding pool. Chang's had a little bit better cue ball control and a slightly more controlled break. We are playing all ball fouls. That's another thing I didn't mention as well. If any player's shirt, clothing, hair, if anything should rub an object ball or the cue ball, it is ball in hand for their opponent. Purple four ball is up table. That's the next ball. He's got to get it all the way back up there. Miss cue. Wow. That was a legal hit, though, I think. Wow, and I believe... Yeah, he's is, still shooting. Is he hooked? Mm, not I mean sure. He, the kick is there, but can he see the edge of it if he opts to try and pocket it? That was huge. Yeah. That was a, that was, he would have won the match there. It should have been out. Where's Sean? Let me see what he's looking like. He's got to feel like he just got a little bit of a lifeline. Chang looking at playing safe somehow. Is he going to leave this? Uh, tough to tell. Yeah, we can't tell. I think, oppor I think opportunity. He's hooked. Nope, look I mean, at him. He's hooked enough that he He's can't sick. make it. Sean's sick. Sean is not a happy camper. We might need to turn the mic off above the table. Just kidding. He's talking to himself, Sean, I'm watching, standing up, watching him, shaking his head. This happened twice now in the last couple of games, a little nudge, 
and it's just gone bad for Sean. I think crossing it for a safety is almost impossible to avoid the double kiss with the cue ball. You might be forced to just kick underneath it and hope for coverage behind the five. Oh, it didn't hit that well. Which I believe is what he was hoping for. That could be the last shot for Sean in this tournament. And Sean was looking good. Sean was in control of this match early on. Yeah, sitting here, 4-2, I thought he we was just going to run away with it. Yeah. We've seen what looks like to be seven in a row from Chang. <laughs> Folks, our next match will be coming to you in approximately 42 minutes. Pacific time will be 2 p.m. We will see Eklund Kachi versus the infamous Shane Van Boning. Yushin, Kevin Cheng, this nine ball to knock Sean Wilkie out of the tournament. Kevin Cheng defeats Sean Wilkie by a scoreline of seven to four. We'll be back in about 40 minutes. I'm Ben Sutherland, joined alongside by Jason Kane. Thank you folks so much for tuning in. We'll see you shortly. Okay, Kevin Chang through to the quarterfinals here at the WPA Players Championship at Griff's Billiards in Vegas. And uh, Kevin, it didn't start out uh, too good. You were down four to one. How worried were you uh, when you were trailing by three? Uh, at the first couple of rig, I just got a bit low and I just missed a couple shot, shots, easy shot. So I think got a bit low is makes sense. And I think four one, I'm gonna lose this game, but he gave me one chance. And uh, after he missed that shot and I got, a, I got a good roll, and he got a big roll. So that's what it comes to Chris. So does coming back from 4-1, um, and now you win 7-4, you're in the quarterfinals, how does that help your confidence uh, moving forward going into the quarterfinals? Uh, I'm, I got a, I think next match I still keep my luck, good luck, you know? But I think it's just play my own, just don't make me too much pressure. I think this tournament for me is just like a one up match for US Open. Yeah, so I just play my own. Yes, that's it. So try not to put too much pressure on yourself. I don't too much, yeah, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. Yep, thanks. Okay, good luck moving forward. Kevin Chang through to the quarterfinals.